the entire national capital region and the neighboring states have been engulfed in a thick envelope of smog and haze. And uh, while there is uh, an utmost emergency with which our governments need to be working on this uh, very difficult emergency situation in, in, in the northern part of India, uh, nothing really has been done. And the people, the citizens of North Delhi are bearing the brunt, North India are bearing the brunt. Now, while we talk about the situation that is tense, we grapple with how to fight the, how to fight this problem of pollution, which is a perennial problem that happens every single time October hits, there is lower temperature, lower wind speeds and farm fires that are then responsible for this unfortunate state of affairs every single year. In midst of all that is happening in the national capital, in North Delhi, in North India, the global press is uh, lambasting India. The global press is talking about how Delhi is the worst city to live in, how Delhi is the most polluted city across the globe. And they are not wrong. They are showing us the mirror. It is our politicians, our governments that govern the national capital and North India that need to be taking action, that need to be working at war footing to fight the situation. It's unfortunate that they don't do it because of their political issues, because of their political games that they play. I'm going to reflect on screen for you a number of these headlines and uh, news reports that are pouring in from across the globe. Let's quickly take a look at the first one. Here it is. This is uh, the BBC that has published this report. It's called the headlines is Delhi air pollution schools shut as air quality now turns severe. There's headline number two, which is coming from Washington Post. This report says, as its headline, New Delhi shuts schools and limits construction work to reduce severe pollution. Headline number three from Al Jazeera, schools shuttered, buses banned as Indian capital takes the pollution crown. There's another headline, world's most toxic air forces, India's capital to shut schools. India's New Delhi engulfed by hazardous air pollution, forcing schools to close. India's New Delhi blanketed by toxic haze. It's the most polluted city in the world. So let's start this conversation. Uh, joining me on the telecast is uh, uh, Gautam Mukherjee. Gautam, it is uh, really not the fault of the international media when it pans, attacks and shames India and the national capital, calling it the most polluted city in the world. Which part of the world would I would like to ask, uh, has any city, has any schools and any government then directed the schools and colleges that they are going to be shut down and the students will sit at, will have to be sit at, sit, will have to sit at homes. They will not be able to step out of their homes because the pollution problem is so severe. You know, most places that have natural disasters uh, are, uh, you know, subjected to emergency measures because there is an act of God. Here, what you've got year after year is an act of man unable to do anything about it. And that is a governance failure of monumental proportions. The best part is, Delhi is where the government, the central government, the state government, and a plethora of institutions are located. And yet, there is absolutely nothing that all of the authorities put together seem to be able to do to make a dent in the uh, burning of Parali, which continues unabated. There are several measures that have come out, but all of them are uh, very ineffective and small in nature. 
And if you look at the present pollution, the AQI, uh, it is not true that the Parali burning is some 25% of the problem. It is probably 95% of the problem. And it is not uh, being tackled by either the state government or the central government. And there are no other authorities that can do anything. <coughs> You're right. Uh, you know, I'm also going to get uh, uh, Dikshu on the telecast with me. Uh, Dikshu Kukureja, uh, being a citizen of uh, Delhi, being a resident of Delhi, you've been living here for years together. And for the last decade or so, uh, there has been this problem that has uh, erupted. There is uh, no recourse that we can fall back on to fight this crisis. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, India, that pictures itself as the fifth largest economy of the world now, it is looking to become the third largest. We are projecting Delhi to be uh, the world capital. We are projecting Delhi to be a technological business hub. When we have the likes of these international airports that are being opened up in Noida and the expansion of the Delhi International Airport, we have the Bharat Mandapam, we have the Dwaraka Convention Center. How are we going to persuade business entrepreneurs? How are we going to persuade um, professionals, international and domestic ones to travel to Delhi in a situation where their health is at stake? Dikshu, if you are able to hear me. Yes, I am able to hear you. Dikshu, you know, the question I pose to all my panelists and to you as well, uh, that while we are going gaga over projecting India and the national capital as the next technological hub, as the biggest business convention center, we have set up our best roads. We are at this point of time promoting and propagating these international airports that are being opened up in Noida, expansion of the IGI airport. Uh, we have state-of-the-art equipment, state-of-the-art technology uh, to, to tell the world to come to India and invest in India. And then you have this smog problem. So these are two contradictory statements that India is putting out. So, so why are the politicians not doing anything about it? I wish I could answer that why the politicians are not doing anything about it, but I couldn't agree with you more that on the one side, we are marching ahead, marching ahead to be a very fast developing economy, the fifth largest economy in the world. And on the other hand, we seem to be trampling on our own citizens. We seem to be choking our own Indian citizens who are living in uh, Delhi, the capital city. So it is uh, rather ironical. It is extremely shocking, hurtful, and it is really full of contradictions. I think while the focus is there on creating world-class infrastructure, somewhere we need to realize that we need to have our fundamentals in place, and that is that we cannot be grappling and discussing on these TV panel discussions anymore, that we don't have air to breathe, or we don't have water in this city which is running dry, or in certain months of the year, we call it monsoons, when the uh, roads are flooded and the city is flooded. So these are really completely ironic things that a city which is actually blessed with seasons, a city which has been known to have this uh, our period of October to December, the best period of the year, not only from the point of view of a, a very beautiful uh, season that we have, but also heavy tourist season. So yes, these uh, effects are having, I think, uh, a very damaging uh, impact on not only the reputation of the country, its impression globally, but also on hardcore um, uh, uh, numbers of economy. Uh, which is going to uh, it's right. uh, bound to start having. Right. I know uh, I've been fortunate to uh, be involved in the design of Bharat Mandapam and Yashu Bhumi. And here you have these fantastic world-class infrastructure which is created. And yet if we don't have the right quality of air or the right facilities for people to come here, I think they're going to bypass us. 
and go to other cities for, for trade and tourism. You're absolutely right, Diksha. But, but, you know, talking about crying horse on media channels, crying horse on our television screens and getting panels, the question I again keep on saying is that our politicians are not doing anything. Have you heard of any politician except for the slugfest that has taken place between the Delhi Environment Minister and who is now raking up the matter and blaming it on the Union Environment Minister? No other minister has come out and spoken about it. No other politician, no other member of the parliament they have not even raised it in the Lok Sabha. So, so, so uh, why are our politicians turning a blind eye? Why do we always have to go to, as a last resort to our judiciary, to our judges? And uh, they are also at this point of time helpless because they come, uh, keep coming out with these observations and judgments, but uh, it, it falls on deaf ears. It certainly falls on deaf ears and it is it is sad because at one side we were being given hope that, you know, the major cause of these uh, uh, this uh, situation in Delhi's air quality has to do with the uh, uh, farm fires which take place in Punjab. And that is now going to be a story of the past because there will be an alignment in terms of uh, uh, political uh, sort of motivation to get this problem sorted out. We heard many assurances coming our way from the highest uh, offices uh, in the city and in the uh, country as well. So therefore, you know, one is speechless and, and one doesn't understand how this kind of matter is being ignored. The only thing I can say is, you know what, Everybody, including including those who are, you are referring to and are silent, happen to be breathing the same air. So I wish for, if not for us, at least for their own lives and their own lungs, uh, you know, people would start, those those who have the powers that be, can start taking uh, decisions in favor of, you know, um, yes. all the citizens who live here. Yes, Dikshu, the very important point that you raised. Now, you know, this is uh, the best time. Delhi has the best weather at this point of time, attracting our tourists over here. Uh, there, this is the best time also in terms of the festivities. And there are a lot of foreign nationals who are very interesting to, interested to enjoy these festivities, the Diwali, uh, the Diwali period, the Sera period. And, and, and then it is all marred by this pollution problem, which continues to be perennial. And, and, we, and you rightfully said, that people, foreign nationals, tourists are then going to travel to other parts of the country. They are going to travel to the south, they are going to travel to the west, they are going to travel to the east, but not come to North India. Uh, we are then losing out on the tourism revenue as well. So this is an economic problem. Why are our governments not looking from this angle? Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, let's put ourselves in the place of that tourist. To, uh, if we were to read the kind of articles you just shared right now in international media, or if we were to watch these uh, terrifying images of Delhi, uh, or, and they were to be of any other city we were contemplating visiting, in what world would we think of visiting such a place? So it is uh, having a serious impact. And I can say that, you know, another aspect of which, which we perhaps uh, might be ignoring right now is Delhi happens to be the capital capital of this country. So it is not just an impression that we are sending out there of Delhi and its livability, but actually of India as a nation on how much importance we lay to our urban areas. How much importance do we lay to our uh, cities, which are considered the engines of growth? And here our own capital city is languishing. And, and this is the state that we have right now, which is really, I think, even from seeing uh, being a Delhiite and seeing it here after year, I think what one saw yesterday in the last few days is even more horrific than what one has seen in the past. And right. this is in spite of so-called some measures of smog towers or fog towers or whatever you want to call them coming up. I think it's a complete drain and hogwash, really. You're absolutely right. Uh, Sharad Kohli, uh, you are a, you're also a resident of Delhi. You have been facing this problem year after year. You know, a, I was shocked, I was surprised at the fact that uh, the sun rays are not able to penetrate to the lower level of the atmosphere. We're completely surrounded by smog, you know, and, and we're breathing it, we are living it, and our, our lives, our precious years are being lost out on it. There have been a number of doctors who have been saying that living in Delhi, being a, being a Delhiite causes your life to cut, be cut down by, by, by 15 to 20 years. And... Uh, 
and the fact that uh, every single time there is a foreign national and, uh, uh, who travels to India, who is working in India, who is living in India, he is given this extra money as part of his salary because he lives in a country, he lives in a city that is not, uh, uh, you know, habitable because of the situation that we face in terms of the pollution that we see. Uh, are you asking me, Mega? Yes, I am. Sorry, I had lost the connection for, for a few seconds. I think, uh, you know, a very important point which we are missing on is that this pollution, Mega, remains all through the year, first of all. You know, it's there all through the year. Just that the, the wind situation at this part of the year, combined with Parali, which is about 15 to 20 percent of your total pollution, if you see the percentage vis a vis vehicular pollution, the Parali pollution, the gases being emitted from the power plants and the construction activity. I take these four pillars and a very important fifth pillar, which is the cause of pollution, uh, you know, indirectly is lack of cooperative federalism. You know, the fighting states and the center when they do not conquer on the fact that we are breathing poison and we are harming our lungs. I think the lack of cooperation between the states and the center or between the two states or whatever because of political differences or political difference of opinions, I think it's the common man who becomes the victim. That's my first point. Now, when pollution remains all through the year, it is just that the wind direction for rest of the year and for Ali, these two factors do not make it worse for rest of the year. Mega, you would agree with me that for rest of the year, we don't feel it. But as for Delhi is concerned, as for national capital is concerned, I think this is a direct dent on the economy of not just Delhi, but the country. Because the number of investors, uh, when G20 happened mega recently, uh, I did a lot of shows on your channel. I was also connected to some of the backend, uh, you know, information and processing centers of G20. And I can tell you with conviction that there was so much commitment made about Delhi NCR. When these delegates saw the infrastructure which Delhi had built, whether it was Bharat Mandapam and, you know, the recent, the Dwarka infrastructure, everything that Delhi has done, all that is going to go down the drain if you do not provide pure air to breathe to the people who are visiting here. And some of the people, you know, our lungs, me and you sitting in Delhi, Mega, our lungs are getting used to this. Although we are knocking off 10 to 12 years from our lifetime, we should not forget that. Our lungs may still be used. I mean, you ask a common man in Delhi and he will say, yes, there is pollution because I read about it. But because you get used to breathing that air, that after some time, while busy with while being busy with your work, you tend to forget it. But when a person comes from Europe, or when a person comes from America, or when a person comes from any part of the country, any part of the world, which is not polluted, you know, you will immediately feel it. So, you know, the human body has got a tendency to getting used to it. You know, the person coming from outside will immediately realize and that is where the problem comes. When people are not going to come here, they will postpone their investment they might decide to relocate the investment from Delhi NCR. Now, let me focus on Delhi NCR. They will relocate from here. They will probably go somewhere down south in Bengaluru or Chennai or somewhere. And, and I know for sure, Mega, that a lot of company offices, investments, factories have been relocated or a decision in their boardroom has been taken to not to go to NCR because these four or five months in NCR are painful, are extremely painful. And there's nothing much which can be done. So I think this is a direct dent on the economy, a direct dent on the reputation of the country. And the worst is that all the four reasons that I listed, they have been in existence for, for times immemorial. Parali has been there for a very, very long time. Vehicle population goes on increasing, unabated, I would say. Uh, the power plants have been running. Construction activity is rampant because this is, this is a developing infrastructure here, especially in Delhi NCR. But unfortunately, you know, all the civic authorities, all the legislative authorities, all the bureaucracy, they have been found to be helpless. They just cannot do anything. You know, I somehow consider this graph, you know, the GRAP. I think it's turning out to be quite useless. If yeah. we have a I mean, we implemented, it, we implemented every single year. It doesn't really help. We have to go through this entire cycle. For the, for the period of two to three weeks. And finally, after Diwali, it uh, starts to ameliorate. Uh, bad situation to be in. 
I also have with me Sadanand Pawar. Sadanand, uh, particularly the focus on economy of India and economy of Delhi, whether it's business tourism, travel tourism, it is Delhi that is bearing the brunt of it. Why do our politicians refuse to address the situation? Is there no solution? The governments have put their hands up and said, this is all that we can do. This is as much as we can do. And now we have to live with it. Is this, is this how the matter, the issue is going to be resolved? Well, it has got multiple facets uh, to address this particular issue. Uh, on the government front, um, uh, I wouldn't be a right authority to say who is doing right or wrong. But the kind of a synopsis or the uh, international media is representing a nation like Bharat or particularly a capital city of Bharat, which is supposed to be the most happening or most developing town in the country that is certainly getting deteriorated the kind of a statistics what we have the total flow of fdi which is happening to a uh, country like us um, day by day over the last six years i'm talking about precisely the financial year 2018 and 19 there is a huge dip from 89 percent the kind of assume that uh, we were getting around thousand dollars per day uh, to delhi in the year 2018 and 19 that graph has reduced drastically it is not at even 143 dollars uh, which is a per day scenario this is just a mathematical uh, calculation so that is the synergy or that is a huge care of uh, which one should really look at it not only the state government or the delhi government but the central government especially the environment or uh, rather a city like delhi or a place like ncr needs a, a redefine the policy of a town planning because at the moment what we have seen is that interstate fighting is happening uh, no political leader is going to take a responsibility there are very few uh, central uh, ministers who are really aggressive and accurate in taking right steps to their uh, respective department but i personally feel uh, the the environment uh, department is lacking to a large which is which is a uh, very disgusting very, very sickening i was in delhi for three days last week and i could really notice and i my fear is till diwali what are we going to do yeah if we are not going to have the business for the next five months now no matter how big the business volume is i'm not going to have the office in india i agree with you Gautam, coming back to you about uh, you know we have these big dreams and goals and aims of uh, getting Olympics over here in India, hosting it, uh, Asian Games, uh, in a situation such as this. We, we can't even host the Olympics during this period of time, the best time that Delhi has. You know, it's, it's not too cold, it's not too hot. This is just, just the right temperature, just the right weather. And you can't even step out. So, so what is India really selling to the world? The world we, we become a laughing stock. So people are saying, the world is saying, listen, you can't even have your air quality in control. Your people in North India are living, uh, breathing poison and uh, impacting your lungs, impacting your health. And you are telling us to bring our athletes to your country, to Delhi, for the Olympic Games, for the sports tournaments. Well, uh, you know, there is just no justification for this. As I said, it's a man-made disaster. And the real reason is the growth of paddy in three states of northern India. This should be banned uh, and, and, and stopped once and for all. No paddy growing in any of these three states, uh, West, uh, you know, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Haryana and Punjab. The reason being that nothing effective is being done to control the pollution coming from Parali. I do not think it's vehicular pollution or pollution from construction or any of the other canards that are spread around. Yes, there is a level of pollution from all that, but it is dwarfed by this one phenomenon that occurs year after year. And there is absolutely zero political will 
to do anything about it because of the implications uh, of vote bank politics and 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 the power that the farmer wields by way of uh, vote banks. Uh, and and because of this, nobody is touching it. They'd rather die than than stop this. And uh, other people find this pathetic, and rightly so. Mega. It's an unfortunate uh, affair, and uh, we are in the thick of things. Uh, the situation extremely difficult, and the fact that there is no solution. We are not able to find a single solution. There have been these measures that have been put in place, but completely futile in the situation that we are, that we are caught in. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.